So when you contact your supplier, there are four potential outcomes that may occur once you make your initial contact with them. Scenario number one is that the supplier responds with all the information that you require. Scenario number two is that the supplier responds with part of the information. Scenario three is that the supplier responds with questions. And scenario four is that the supplier doesn't respond at all. Let's look into each of these and give you specific strategies to use depending on what happens. We also give you some timeframes to work from so that you have an idea of what to expect when you go through the process. So the first potential outcome is the supplier responds with all the information that you ask for. If this happens, you should firstly reply thanking them for sending all the information and inform them that you'll be in touch shortly once you've had a chance to go through the information and run some numbers from your side. You'll take the data that you've received and input it into the Google Sheet so that you can assess the results. When I say assess the results, I'm referring to you being able to figure out your exact item's profitability so that you can know whether or not the item works financially. I'll show you how to do this shortly. The next scenario is that your supplier responds with part of the information that you asked for. In this case, begin by replying and thanking them for sending the information you asked for. In that same email, request the missing pieces of information you require and let them know that you need this information to be able to accurately assess the product in your market. You can let them know that you're in a position to place an order quickly should the economics behind the product work well for you. This will show the supplier that you're serious about placing an order and will help them understand the importance of the information that you haven't received yet. Another important tip is to always be respectful when communicating with your supplier and remind them that you're looking forward to building a long-term relationship with them. Respect is extremely important in Eastern culture and you should go above and beyond to display this at all times. The next scenario is that your supplier responds with specific questions for you. Begin as always by replying and thanking them for replying to your query, then simply respond with answers to their queries. There's no need for you to be concerned about whether or not you should message some of your answers to their questions. Simply respond by tr being truthful and give them as much detail as they require. Here are some common questions that you'll likely receive. One, how many pieces will you order? Two, what packaging do you require? And the third most common question will generally ask if they can have more information about your company. If they ask the third question, I tend to focus on the fact that you plan to launch their product in both the European and North American markets. Of course, only say this if this is really your intention. I let them know that we're excited about the opportunity of creating a brand that will sell for the long term in these markets and that you look forward to working with them well into the future. As you can see, I keep reminding the supplier about the long-term relationship at all times. Don't stress about these responses, however. Follow these guidelines and you'll be fine. And finally, let's look at the final potential outcome, which is that the supplier doesn't respond. So the first thing to be aware of in this case is that you'll need to allow the supplier at least a week to respond to your initial queries. Remember, they're dealing with a lot of different people, and so it may take them time to get back to you, as they may be collating all the information that you requested. Also, be mindful of Chinese holidays, as typically factories are closed during these periods of time. And as a result, the contact may not actually receive your email, as they're usually not in the office at that time. Also, when the supplier returns from Chinese holidays, be aware that they're going to need time to get back up to speed and respond to all the queries that have built up. Next, make sure to recheck your email and spam folder in case any of the responses went there. This can happen if the email that's responded to your query is unknown within your email system. Also check other forms of contact such as Skype or Alibaba Messenger as suppliers sometimes respond here instead of email. And finally, if you receive no response within a week, resend a shortened version and give them another week to respond. After that, it's likely sensible to move on, but note that this would only be true if there weren't any Chinese holidays happening at the time you sent the first email. In other words, these holidays will affect the time frame and you really must take this into consideration before becoming impatient with your supplier. Your goal, of course, is to get yourself to scenario A with your supplier. You want the supplier to respond to you and send you all the information that you require. So you'll simply rinse and repeat this process I've outlined in this video until you get your supplier to scenario A. So we're here. We've received our information back from our supplier and we're ready to start calculating our item's profitability in the Google spreadsheet. Before we do that, there are a few things that we need to put together so that we have everything we need to calculate our profit.